evolution reincarnation and the path to realization Welcome to my channel All Things Spiritual. I hope you liked my last video on spirituality, science and the selfless journey to the Atma. I will link it up so that you can view it. But before we proceed, if you like the content, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. A soul becomes perfect after passing through evolution, reincarnation and the process of realization. To gain full consciousness, it gets increasing life impressions in the process of evolution. In the human form, it gets full consciousness as well as all the impressions from the gross form. In the process of reincarnation, the soul retains its full consciousness and exchanges alternatingly experiences the diverse impressions in itself. and in the process of realization this soul retains its full consciousness but its impressions fade till they all disappear and only consciousness remains while they fade gross impressions become subtle impressions and subtle impressions become mental impressions and finally they disappear up to the human form the cessation of these impressions becomes stronger and stronger in the process of evolution in the human form the process of reincarnation the impressions retain their full strength but in in the process of realization the impressions gradually unwind themselves till in the god state they are completely unwound parmatma or god consciousness alone is real nothing exists but god the different souls are in the parmatma and one with it the process of evolution reincarnation and realization are all necessary in order to enable the soul to gain self consciousness in the process of winding impressions become instrumental for the evolution of consciousness though they also have their bindings and in the process of unwinding these attachments are then annihilated though the consciousness which has been gained is fully retained in the process of winding of impressions the soul goes through seven stages of descent and in the process of unwinding the soul goes through seven stages of ascent but the phenomena of descent as well as ascent are both illusory the soul is everywhere and indivisibly infinite and it does not move or ascend or descend the souls of all men and women men of all castes and creeds are really one and their experiences of good and evil of fighting and helping and waging wars and living in peace are all a part of illusion and delusion because all these experiences are gained through bodies and minds which are in themselves nothing before the world of forms and individuality came into existence there was nothing but god that is an indivisible and boundless ocean of power knowledge and bliss but this ocean was unconscious of itself picture to yourself this ocean as absolutely still and calm unconscious of its power knowledge and bliss and unconscious that it is the ocean the billions of drops which are in the ocean do not have any consciousness they do not know that they are drops or that they are in the ocean or that they are part of the ocean this represents the original state of reality the original state of reality comes to be disturbed by the urge to know itself the urge was always latent in the ocean and when it begins to express itself it then endows each drop with individuality when this urge makes the still water move there immediately spring up numerous forms around these drops and it is these forms which give individuality to the drops the forms do not and cannot individually divide the indivisible ocean they cannot separate the drop from the ocean they merely give these drops a feeling of separateness and limited individuality now let us study the life of each such droplet through its different stages owing to the arising of the form the droplet which was completely unconscious is invested with individuality or a feeling of separateness as well as with very slight consciousness this consciousness which is sprung in the droplet is not of itself or of the ocean but it is of the form which is in itself nothing this imperfect form at this stage may represent by the form of a stone after some time this form burst and there springs up another form now when a form burst two things happen there is an increase in consciousness and there is a twist or consolidation of impressions 
accumulated during the life of the previous form. The consciousness of the droplet has now slightly increased but the droplet is still conscious only of its new form and not of itself or of the ocean. This new form also burst in due course of time and simultaneously there is further increase in consciousness and a fresh twist or consolidation of impressions which gives rise to emergence of other type of form. If you watch till the end, you would know about what kind of connection does a God-realized being have with all the souls of the world. So stay tuned and also please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. This process continues right through the process of evolution which covers the stages of plants to animals. Every time the previous form bursts, it gains more consciousness and adds one twist to the already accumulated impressions until it reaches the human form in which the ever increasing consciousness becomes full and complete. The process of winding up of impressions consists of these regular twists and it is these twists which keep the consciousness gained by the droplet directed and fixed towards the form instead of towards the real self even when consciousness is fully developed in the human form. On gaining the human form, the second process begins. The process is that of reincarnation. At this point, the process of ascending up the impressions comes to an end. The droplet takes numerous human forms one by one. The human forms are sometimes those of man and sometimes those of a woman and they change nationalities, appearance, color, creed, etc. The droplet through human incarnations experiences itself sometimes as a beggar and sometimes as the king and thus gathers experiences of the opposites of happiness or misery according to the good or bad impressions. In reincarnation, in its successful several human forms, the droplet retains its full consciousness but continues to have alternating experiences of opposite impressions till the process of realization begins. And during the process of realization, the impressions get unmarked. In reincarnations, there is a spending up of impressions, but this spending up is quite different from unwinding of impressions which takes place during the process of realization. The spending up of impressions itself creates new impressions which bind the soul but unwinding of impressions does not itself create fresh impressions and it is intended to undo the very strong grip of impressions over lifetimes in which the droplet is caught. Up to the human form, the winding up of impressions becomes stronger and stronger during the process of evolution. In the human forms of reincarnation, the winding continues to operate as a limiting factor but with every change of human form, the tight twists trained during the process of winding get loosened through a lot of cycles of births and deaths before it is ready to unwind in the process of realization. Now begins the third process of realization which is the process of ascent. Here the droplet undergoes the gradual unwinding of the impressions. During the process of unwinding, the impressions fade with each lifetime and at the same time the consciousness of the droplet gets directed more and more towards itself and thus the droplet passes passes through the subtle and mental planes till all the impressions disappear completely enabling it to become conscious of itself as the ocean. In the infinite ocean of the Paramatma or God consciousness, you are the droplet or the soul. You are the soul in the ordinary state and you use your consciousness in seeing and experiencing the form. Through the gross layer of the form, you experience the huge gross form which is the earth. You are eternally lost and indivisibly one with God but you do not experience it. In the advanced stage up to the third plane, you use your consciousness in seeing and experiencing the huge subtle form called the subtle world through the subtle form called the subtle body. But you do not see and experience God consciousness which you are in. Since your consciousness is not now directed towards God, you in the advanced stage from the third to the sixth plane, you use your consciousness in seeing and experiencing the huge mental form which is called the mental body. But even now, you do not experience the God consciousness. But in the God-realized state, you continually use your consciousness for seeing and experiencing God and then all forms are known as being nothing but forms only. So now picture yourself as the Atma lodged in God consciousness behind five koshas of the gross body. You the droplet are now looking at the gross body through it at the gross world. When you look at the second layer through it, the first layer will look to you as nothing but a layer only and thus looking behind each layer you will find all these layers as only your shadowy covers. And finally when you the droplet get merged with God consciousness, you realize you only were real and all that you were seeing and experiencing till now was 
योर शेडो एंड नथिंग एल्स द परमात्मा और गॉड कॉन्शियसनेस कंटेन्स एवरीथिंग इन द यूनिवर्स द सिंगल लिविंग सोल इज इन द थ्री मेन स्टेजेस ऑफ एवोल्यूशन री एनकारनेशन एंड प्रोसेस ऑफ रियलाइजेशन बिफोर अटेंडिंग द ह्यूमन फॉर्म इट गोज थ्रू सेवन स्टेजेस ऑफ एक्सिस्टेंस एट द सेवन स्टेज जस्ट बिफोर एंटरिंग न्यू काइंड ऑफ एक्सिस्टेंस देर इज अ ट्विस्ट और अ नॉट विच स्टैंड फॉर द कंसोलिडेशन ऑफ द प्रीवियसली एक्वायर्ड इम्प्रेशन द इंडिविजुअल सोल एक्यूमुलेट्स इम्प्रेशन ड्यूरिंग द प्रोसेस ऑफ एवोल्यूशन एंड द कॉन्शियसनेस कम्स टू बी डेवलप simultaneously a soul goes from a progression from a to z after going through evolution reincarnation and the process of realization it is only in the god consciousness state that it is free from impressions since consciousness of the gross world is not fully developed in the pre human stages of evolution they merely experience the gross world only partially while since the consciousness is fully developed in human form it is capable of understanding the gross world in all its different aspects in the process of reincarnation the soul may take a male or a female form and it may belong to a nationality creed or religion from the point of view of self knowledge the process up to the attainment of human forms represents an actual descent though it looks like an ascent the process of realization represents an actual ascent which goes up from the early stages of pre human evolution to the gross world which comes to the gross world to the god state the process of ordinary reincarnation begins after the winding is complete and it continues till the unwinding has begun in the process of realization advanced souls from the first plane to the third plane are conscious only of the subtle world through their subtle bodies they are aware of the ordinary souls who are gross conscious and can act upon them in the subtle world but all this is done by them through the subtle body and in the subtle body they have no connection with the gross world through the gross body in the same way advanced souls in the fourth and the sixth planes are aware of the gross conscious as well as the subtle conscious souls but they act upon them in the mental world through the mental body and they have no connection with the gross world through the gross body or the subtle world through the subtle body in the god state in which all impressions are unwound consciousness is turned only to god who have no connection with the gross or the subtle or the mental world but a few who enjoy the god state also come down and regain the consciousness of the entire creation these are the souls of masters the master soul is connected with god beyond it is the resting place of the masters it is connected with the god state and it is not only connected with all the three worlds but all the souls whether they are mental conscious subtle conscious or reincarnating human beings who are gross conscious or souls who are in pre human evolutionary stage evolution up to the human form and the process of realization up to the god realized plane the soul in the illustration is shown as having increasing number of circles around itself up to the human stage it is also shown as retaining all the circles later on second circle which is next to the soul represents consciousness which goes goes on increasing up to the human form but afterwards it remains constant in evolution plants acquire the most undeveloped instinct but not the subtle body which emerges in the undeveloped form in worms and reptiles the subtle body goes on developing until it is fully developed in the human form side by side with the development of subtle body there is a simultaneous development of instinct intellect in its partial development makes its first appearance in the stage of animals but mental body appears only at the last stage represented by the human form in the human form the first innermost circle represents the individual soul the next outer circle represents full consciousness and then the other outer circles in order of which they are drawn respectively they represents the seat of individuality impressions or expressed desires intellect felt desires of the subtle body in which there is a partial expression of desires and the gross body in which the desires come to be fully expressed all the circles round the innermost circle of the soul with the expression of the first circle of consciousness are layers of consciousness of these layers the outermost circle and the circle next to it represent respectively the gross and the subtle bodies while the other four layers around the consciousness represent four functions of the mental body of these four functions of the mental body two desires and intellect are usually included under the mind and the other two impressions or unexpressed desires and the feeling of individuality are included under the ego thus at the human stage the soul with its consciousness has three bodies but six layers including the gross layer known as the gross body when after incarnation the human soul launches the process of realization the intellect is replaced by inspiration and finds its expression from the first to the third plane and from the fourth to the sixth plane this inspiration is transformed into illumination the colored rings or concentric circles represent the soul of god realized person with all the vehicles at its 
disposal. In respect of this picture, the following points should be carefully noted. The three outer rings respectively represent the gauze, subtle and the mental bodies. We find all these bodies also in ordinary human beings. In the God-realized person, there has emerged a new spiritual body which is known as the universal body or the Mahakaran Sharira, which is the seat of universal mind. Just as water is contained in the cup, the universal mind may be said to be contained in the universal body. Therefore, though the universal body and the universal mind are represented by two different circles, they are inseparable from each other. The universal mind of the master which works through the universal body is in direct contact with the mental bodies of all individual souls in creation and it can through these mental bodies bring about any changes in the mental subtle or gross bones. Though the master has a mental body like ordinary humans, he always uses only his universal mind. In the master's soul, the limited ego of the human stage is transmuted into the unlimited ego. That is the feeling of separateness or narrow individuality is replaced by realization of unlimited, undivisible and all comprehensive existence. The soul of the master is endowed with infinite consciousness. The full consciousness of the human stage does not reveal or express the infinity of the soul owing to the limitations of impressions. But in the God-realized person, the full consciousness is not limited by any impressions and therefore it reveals or expresses the infinity of the soul. So you see, a God-realized being has a connection to every living being in the world and also the beings that are currently being reincarnated. How did you like the content? Please do let me know in the comment section below. Also, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. I will see you in the next video.